Hey, future badass business owners. So you're thinking about starting a cake decorating business. You have a passion, a skill for building cakes and making cakes. And you are now thinking about how do I turn this into a part-time or a full time business. Well, what we're going to do in today's video is we're going to show you the steps you need to take to get this new business off the ground. Now, let me tell you what this video is not. It is not about how to actually build cakes. Those are other videos. What we're talking about is the business side of it and what you need to do to make sure that if you're going to start this business, you do it the right way. So hang on tight. One of the first things that you need to make sure of is that this is actually a business you want to be doing and that it's the right business for you. And the reason is because you're going to be spending a lot of time doing it. Not only are you doing the business side of it, obviously you're going to be making the cakes and you need to find that happy medium because you're not just going to be spending all day long in the kitchen building and making these cakes and decorating them. There's a business side to the entire thing and you want to make sure that you really are passionate about the, are passionate about this because it's going to get old at some times and you need to be able to push through until you can build it even bigger to have other people help you out with one parts or the other. Now, before you start, the biggest thing that you could do for your new cake business is you need to do your research. And the main reason you need to do your research is it's going to save you time and money. And both of those are the most precious things that you have in your business. Now, you're probably asking yourself, what are the things that you need to research? Well, we're going to go over four key areas, and I believe there's a fifth one as well. First one we're going to talk about is competition. Then we're going to talk about legal requirements money needs, and we're going to talk about marketing. So when you're looking at this, the first thing you need to do is you need to research your competition. And your competition could be big people and little people. So it could be something as simple as the cake makers at Baskin Robbins who are making cakes, or it could be the the local grocery stores and their cake businesses. And it could be other folks that are doing the high level detailed cakes that you are planning to do. You need to study them all. You need to study them all because you need to understand a few different things. You need to understand what do they do poorly? What are they just absolutely horrible at? And then what you want to do is you want to ask yourself, well, what do they do well? We want to understand both the good and the bad, because at the end of the day, your goal is how do you stand out? And also, we're going to talk about pricing in a little bit. And that's another key thing, because one of the biggest problems that new cake decorators make is they are priced horribly. So part of it is pricing, part of it is the the quality of the cakes and what you get, the timeline to get the cakes, everything. You need to understand everything that your competition is doing. You need to look at the quality of the products and the ingredients and the things that they're using. You need to definitely make sure you understand what they charge, what are their upgrades, what aren't included, what are included. Uh, Remember, this is not a race to the bottom on pricing. And this is where a huge mistake, like I was saying earlier, uh, if you watch tons of videos out there on how to price your cakes, so and go to the comment section, so many people are saying that they wish they had started and we're actually going to be putting together a video on helping you with the pricing of your cakes. But you need to make sure that you really are studying your competition and that you fully understand all of these different things about the competitors. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to be just another cake decorating business. You want to focus on the pain point that you are solving. Now, you may think this sounds funny. Pain point with cake decorating? What's the pain point? No, you don't understand. When someone's thinking about buying that perfect cake for that special occasion, they have a pain point because they don't want to mess it up. They want to find the right cake. They want to find the right person to make it, the right flavors, the right decorations, the right timing. There's a lot of pain points involved when someone goes to buy a cake. So don't assume that your clients don't have a pain point that you're going to be solving. And that's one of the reasons you want to dive into your competitors to find out what pain points they are actually solving. Now, legal requirements, you are starting a business. So it's really important that you ask yourself a few questions. One, you need to understand, are you going to form your business? Understand, are you going to form your business as an LLC or a DBA? Now, an LLC is a legal entity. It's actually where a company is formed 100%. So it's you running the company. And DBA is doing business as. This is where you are still doing business as yourself, but you're using a special name like Katie's Cakes or something like that. So you're doing business as. Now, each state is going to determine what you can do. Most states for this particular business will allow you to do either or. A lot of people start off as a DBA and eventually become an LLC. Uh, That's probably the right thing for a lot of you, but definitely talk to your local legal experts. I'm not a legal expert, nor am I familiar with your particular state. So make sure you do your homework. Now, when you're also looking at your legal requirements, you need to look at what type of licensing you have to have, what type of permits you need to do, you are working with food. Sometimes you can't work out of certain locations. You need to find out if you need to have certain types of insurance and definitely check with both your city, your county, and your state. They could 
be different. All you need to make sure which ones you have to follow. So city, county, and state, make sure you check with all three of them as to the type of business you plan to build and what are your requirements in your area. Now, funds needed. You can't all of a sudden go buy some ingredients and think that you can put the kicks together. There's going to be some funds needed to get started. You can take that very first client and take their money and then go ahead and start buying the things that you need, but you need to make sure you understand what it is. Now, the good thing is starting a cake business is relatively cheap in the beginning. You can use some things around the home, but it does get expensive and it can get fancy. There are all kinds of cool things out there. So you need to make sure that you're looking at all the different things that are needed in your business. For example, tools equipment. If you're going to need a vehicle to be able to deliver the cakes, are they going to pick them up? Brick and mortar. Most of you are not going to start off with a brick and mortar, so don't get too hung up on that. Advertising. In a minute, we're going to talk about marketing and advertising, and you can do a lot of things for free. You, you might be some money for licensing, etc. Now, don't think you need to have the most high-end equipment when you get going. You don't. But what you can do is you take your profit, profits, re-roll them back into the company, and you can get that really high-end mixer and all those fancy gadgets to make cakes later on. But what are your must-haves to start the business? And what are your nice-to-haves that you want to try to purchase in the first year? So when you're doing your research, you want to make sure that you have two different buckets going on as to the type of money that you need. Money you need right away and money that you're going to need to be able to grow and expand the business. Now, another part of money and finances you need to do is making sure that you get paid. And when you're getting paid, you're going to have invoicing, you're going to bid out those cakes, you're going to maybe need an accountant if you're not familiar with numbers or comfortable with numbers. You can do it all yourself. You can find someone in your family who might be able to help you, a friend. Uh, you got to have some type of bookkeeping. There's a lot of ingredients and a lot of pieces that go into your cost of goods. And where you make your money is making sure that you fully understand your cost of goods so you price correctly. So I really, really want to make sure that your accounting and bookkeeping piece that you are doing really good and you knowing your business numbers because at the end of the day you want to make sure you get paid and you don't want to find out that you just spent you made like a dollar 22 and it happens it sounds crazy but it does happen it's important that you understand all of that now when it comes to marketing and branding what you want to do is how are you going to let people know you even exist a big part of your business is going to be word of mouth but at the same time you don't want to just assume that so you need to figure out what's going to be your marketing plan how are you going to get the word out to your community that you build these cakes especially because you're probably going to be focusing on the 5-10 mile radius around where you're at. Now, there are a lot of free types of advertising out there. Number one is going to be word of mouth by far. Um, word of mouth can be just people telling their friends, their neighbors, their cousins. You also have people that are doing it online. You need to make sure that you, you claim your space, you claim your business on Google, on Google business page, the Bing business page, because what's going to happen is people are going to grab their phone and Google custom cakes, and you want to make sure that you are found. So take all the keywords that you can be found for and make sure you put it in that Google listing because people might say uh, cake business, uh, cake building, uh, cake building, uh, custom cakes, anything like that. You want to make sure you claim all that. People on Facebook are still looking for recommendations. Uh, same thing with next door networking. You've got to go out there and tell people the type of business you have in your community. Get with realtors because they sometimes might do it as a welcome home gift. Let them know what's going on. Now there's also paid Facebook ads, postcards, flyers, etc. You probably don't need those right away. You might do those later on, but I'm telling you when you're really good at your craft and word starts getting out when they go to the parties and they see it, you're going to start, word of mouth is going to be huge for you, but you need to find two places I want you to concentrate on in the beginning. One is going to be word of mouth, but two is claim your business online because the very first thing that people are going to do is they're going to Google it don't make that mistake. Now, hiring people, you might bring some people aboard to try to help you out, but the odds are you're not going to hire a team in the beginning. But anybody that you bring on, you want to make sure that you hire the best, that you give them training and onboarding, that they really know what your expectations are. People are paying good money for these cakes that you're doing, and you want to make sure that you know exactly who you're getting and that you're training them the right way. And how are you going and how are you going to pay them? Are you going to do it as a payroll? Are they going to be full time with you? Most of the time they're going to be independent contractors. You just pay them for their help. So you need to make sure you really understand what's that look like in the beginning. Now, one of the things you need to make sure is you just did a lot of research and you need to pull it all together. And this is where a business plan kind of comes together. I like to call it a success blueprint because honestly, do you need to have a actual business plan? A traditional business plan is typically used when people need to borrow money or they're going to buy a franchise. And that's not going to be you. you sh we're going to try to get your business off the ground without you having to borrow money from anybody and go out and, and go to banks and stuff like that. So you don't need a traditional business plan, but there is some value to it. That's why I call it a success plan. You want to take all of the research and all of the stuff that you're doing and you need to build a plan and put one in place that you're going to use to open your business and run it. And you need to take all that research and say, this is how I'm going to get off the ground. This is what my first year is going to look like. This is how I'm going to be charging. This is going to look how my cost 
just look like you're going to be putting all of that information into this business plan. Now, you probably notice me talking a lot about cost of goods and money and numbers and everything else. One of the biggest mistakes people make when they start these businesses is they fail to learn and understand their business numbers. I understand you might hate math, you might hate all of that, but you are a business owner now. And unfortunately, being a business owner means you've got to understand profits and you need to understand that top line sales, the money you take in, it goes out through cost of goods and expenses before you ever get to the profits. And you also need to understand how you pay yourself in your business. And all of that comes from learning your business numbers. I, I, I preach this most of my channel is about knowing your business numbers because you need to understand pricing, margin, markup, profit and loss statement. These are just a few of those things. This thing right here is your profit and loss income statement. It is the business report card for your business and it tracks the money in and out of your business and you need to make sure you understand what that is. Remember, you are running a business. You are not just creating a job for yourself. This is not a hobby anymore. You have turning this into a business. You need to treat it like a business and you need to understand. You know you want to learn more about this. So please make sure you subscribe to the channel because I'm going to put all kinds of videos out there on how you get your business up and running, but more importantly, how to understand your business numbers better. And if you want to have two more courses out there that's out there, one is for starting a small business. I take a deeper dive into all of these topics, plus a few more. You can go over to startasmallbusiness.com for that. And you can also go to Know Your Business Numbers, the most popular course I have for people to want to learn to understand their business numbers. But like I said, there's free stuff right here on the channel. So make sure you hit subscribe. And if you like what you've seen so far, please make sure you hit that like button. Let people know that they should watch this video. And don't forget to subscribe because, hey, we want to keep you around so we can help you be a profitable, profitable business owner. Now get out there and become the badass business owner that I know you are. are.